Hello everyone, I am Hera Khan and I have prepared this topic that is module 1 version 2 of cloud concepts wherein we will discuss about uh, the different types of cloud models and the different types of cloud services. This course has been prepared exclusively for IT tools training. So let's move forward and let's talk about the different types of cloud services. So you have the different types of cloud models starting with a public cloud, a private cloud and a hybrid cloud model. Furthermore, after we understand what the different types of cloud models, we will also discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of each of these public cloud, private cloud and hybrid cloud model. So starting with public cloud, a public cloud is owned by a cloud service provider also known as a hosting provider and it provides resources and services to multiple organizations and users who connect to cloud service via a secure network connection typically over the internet. So the example of these uh, public cloud uh, model is you have Microsoft Azure, you have Amazon Web Services, and you have Google Cloud, and you have multiple other uh, public cloud uh, offerings. So the advantages of a public cloud offering is that you do not have to buy a new server in order to scale. So you do not have to pay any CapEx. Then it has agility, so the applications can be made accessible quickly and deprovisioned whenever needed. Public cloud follows a consumption-based model. Organizations pay only for what they use and operate under an OPEX model. Organizations have no responsibility for hardware maintenance or updates. In case of skills that are required, so no deep technical skills are required to deploy, use and gain the benefits of a public cloud. Organizations can leverage the skills and expertise of a cloud provider to ensure workloads are secure, safe and highly available. Then there are certain disadvantages of public cloud as well. So starting with just understanding the simple term of security. So there may be very specific security requirements of your customers which cannot be met by using a public cloud. However, there are capabilities that you can definitely uh, inculcate within this public cloud model as well to make sure that your instances or servers are safe and secure on the cloud. Then you have the disadvantage of compliance. So there may be government policies, there may be industry standards, or legal requirements which public clouds do not or cannot meet. Then the ownership. Uh, disadvantage. So organizations don't own the hardware or services and cannot manage them as they may wish. So you only have ownership from the operating system level. The infrastructure is owned by the public cloud provider. And then there are specific scenarios. So if an organization have a unique business requirement such as having to maintain a legacy application, it may be hard to meet that requirement with public cloud services. The next cloud service is your private cloud. So a private cloud is owned and operated by the organization that uses the resources from that cloud. They create a cloud environment in their own data center and provide self-service access to compute resources to users within their organization. The organization remains the owner entirely responsible for the operation of the services they provide. So there are various advantages of public cloud, sorry, private cloud. So you, the first advantage is control. Organizations have complete control over the resource, including the infrastructure. Organizations have complete control over the security. If organizations have very strict security, compliance or legal requirements, a private cloud may be the only viable option. Then you have specific scenarios. So if an organization has a specific scenario, 
not easily supported by a public cloud provider such as having to maintain a legacy application, it may be preferable to run the application locally. Now there are certain disadvantages as well if you go for private cloud. So you have to pay upfront capex. Hardware must be purchased for startup and maintenance. Then you have agility issues, so private clouds are not as agile as public clouds because you need to purchase and set up all the underlying infrastructure before they can be leveraged. Then you have to understand the maintenance as well. So organizations will have the responsibility for hardware maintenance and updates and private cloud requires in-house IT skills and expertise that may be hard to get or may be costly. Now we will move on to the hybrid cloud model. A hybrid cloud combines both public and private cloud allowing you to run your application in the most appropriate location. There are various advantages of hybrid cloud. The first and foremost is that it provides flexibility. It is the most flexible scenario. With a hybrid cloud setup, an organization can decide to run their applications either in a private cloud or in a public cloud. The second advantage is cost. Organizations can take advantage of economies of scale from public cloud providers for services and resources as they wish. This allows them to access cheaper storage than they can provide themselves. Then you have control. Organizations can still access resources over which they have total control. So if you want your database server to be in your on-prem environment to make it more secure since it has data, you can do that. But if again, that database is serving a web application or web server that you can have on the cloud, on the public cloud. Then you have uh, the advantage of compliance. Organization maintain the ability to comply with strict security, compliance or legal requirements is needed. Furthermore, organizations maintain the ability to support specific scenarios not easily supported by a public cloud provider, such as running legacy applications. In this case, they can keep the old system running locally and connect to a public cloud for authorization or storage. Additionally, they could host a website in the public cloud and link it to a highly secure database hosted in their private cloud. Furthermore, there are again some disadvantages if there are advantages. So you have upfront capex. So upfront capex is still required before organizations can leverage a private cloud. Then you have costs. So purchasing and maintaining a private cloud to use alongside the public cloud can be more expensive than selecting a single deployment model. Then deep technical skills are again still required to be able to set up your private cloud. And then ease of management. Uh, will be a little bit complicated because organizations will have to ensure a clear set of guidelines to avoid confusion, complications and misuse. Now that we have understood the different types of cloud models, now let's go ahead and understand different types of cloud services. So the lesson four is types of cloud services. The first one is infrastructure as a service model. Then you will have platform as a service model. And furthermore, you will have software as a service model. Apart from these three very famous models, you have various other models like database as a service. You have identity as a service and others. So starting with infrastructure as a service, so infrastructure as a service is the most basic category of cloud computing services. With IaaS, you rent IT infrastructure servers and virtual machines, storage, network and operating system from a cloud provider on a pay-as-you-go model. It's an instant computing infrastructure provisioned and managed over the internet. IaaS have various characteristics like upfront cost. So uh, IaaS has no upfront cost. 
users pay only for what they consume. Then you have user ownership. So the user is responsible for the purchase, installation, configuration and management of their own software operating system, middleware and application. Then you have cloud provider ownership. So the cloud provider is responsible for ensuring that the underlying cloud infrastructure such as virtual machines, storage and networking is available for the user. So when you are using IaaS, ensuring that a service is up and running is a shared responsibility. The cloud provider is responsible for ensuring the cloud infrastructure is functioning correctly. The cloud customer is responsible for ensuring the service they are using is configured correctly, is up to date and is available to their customers. This basically is referred to as the shared responsibility models. Now there are various uh, usage scenarios in case of infrastructure as a service model. The first usage scenario is migrating workloads. So typically IaaS facilities are managed in a similar way as on-prem infrastructure and provide an easy migration path for moving existing applications to the cloud. Then another user scenario is your testing and development scenarios. So teams can quickly set up and dismantle test and development environments, bringing new applications to market faster. IaaS makes scaling development testing environments up and down fast and economical. Then you have website hosting as one of the common usage scenarios. So running website using IaaS can be less expensive than traditional web hosting wherein you're purchasing web servers, you're purchasing database servers, or disaster recovery servers, etc. Other details. The another usage scenario is storage backup and recovery. So organizations avoid the capital outlay and complexity of storage management which typically requires a skilled staff to manage data and meet legal and compliance requirements. IaaS is useful for managing unpredictable demand and steadily growing storage needs. It can also simplify the planning and management of backup and recovery systems. The next type of cloud service is platform as a service. So PaaS provides an environment for building, testing and deploying software applications. The goal of PaaS is to help create an application as quickly as possible without having to worry about managing the underlying infrastructure. For example, when deploying a web application using PaaS, you don't have to install an operating system, web server or even system updates. PaaS is a complete development and deployment environment in the cloud with resources that enable organizations to deliver everything from simple cloud-based applications to sophisticated cloud-enabled enterprise applications. Resources are purchased from a cloud service provider on a pay-as-you-go basis and accessed over a secure connection. PaaS also has a lot of characteristics. The first one is the upfront cost. Again, there is no upfront cost and users pay only for what they consume. Then you have user ownership. So the user is responsible for the development of their own applications. However, they are not responsible for managing the server or infrastructure. This allows the user to focus on the application or workload they want to learn. So it's a typical environment for a developer. Then when we understand the cloud provider ownership, so the cloud provider is responsible for operating system management and network and service configuration. The cloud providers are typically responsible for everything apart from the application that a user wants to run. They provide a complete managed platform on which to run an application. Now there are various usage scenarios which are very common when we talk about the PaaS cloud service. The first one is a development framework. So PaaS provides a framework that developers can build upon to develop or customize cloud-based applications. Similar to the way you create a Microsoft Excel my macro, 
pass lets developers create applications using built-in software components cloud features such as scalability high availability and multi-tenant capability are included reducing the amount of coding that developers must do another common user scenario is analytics or business intelligence so tools provided as a service with pass allow organizations to analyze and mine their data they can find insights and patterns and predict outcomes to improve businesses decisions such as forecasting product design and investment returns now the third type of cloud service is software as a service so software as a service or saas is a software that is centrally hosted and managed for the end customer it allows users to connect to and use cloud based applications over the internet common examples are emails calendar office tools such as microsoft office 365 your salesforce.com application facebook etc So SaaS is typically licensed through a monthly or annual subscription and Office 365 is actually an example of software as a service software that is a SaaS software. SaaS has a, again some characteristics. So in case of upfront cost, users have no upfront cost. They pay for using a subscription model typically on a monthly or an annual basis when we talk about user ownership users just use the application software they are not responsible for any maintenance or management of that software and when we talk about cloud provider ownership the cloud provider is responsible for the provision management and maintenance of the application software now there are various common use scenarios so you have Office three sixty five, Skype, Microsoft Dynamics, CRM Online, Salesforce dot com, Facebook, or any other browsable application is a SaaS application. So now that we understand these different types of cloud services, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and platform as a service, let's also see the comparison between between the three, and again. understand both the advantages and disadvantages of the three types of cloud services so infrastructure as a service is the most flexible category of cloud services it aims to give you complete control over the hardware that runs your application instead of buying hardware with iaas you rent it so users have no upfront cost applications can be made accessible quickly and deprovisioned whenever needed organizations pay only for what they use and operate under an opex model no deep technical skills are required to deploy use and gain the benefits of public cloud organizations can leverage the skills and expertise of the cloud provider to ensure workloads are made secure and highly available iaas is the most flexible cloud service as you have control to configure and manage the hardware running your application then there's one disadvantage that there's a shared responsibility model the user manages and maintains the services that they have provisioned and the cloud provider manages and maintains the cloud infrastructure then you talk about pass pass provides the same benefits and considerations in iaas as iaas but there are some additional benefits like users have no upfront cost which is again same but it is agile more agile so users do not need to configure servers for running applications they just have to care about the development of the application then it's a consumption the so users pay only for what they use and operate as on an opex model and no deep technical skills are required to deploy use and gain benefits of pass users can leverage the skills and expertise of a cloud provider to ensure their workloads are made secure and highly available in addition users can gain access to more cutting edge development tools and tool sets then they can apply these tools and tool sets across the application life cycle however there is a disadvantage as well which is called as a platform limitation so there may be some limitations to a particular cloud platform that could affect how an application runs so any limitation should be taken into consideration when you are considering to 
host an application on a PaaS platform. The third model is your software as a service model. SaaS is software that is centrally hosted, managed for end user. It is usually based on an architecture where one version of the application is used for all customers and licensed through a monthly or an annual subscription. SaaS provides the same benefits as IaaS, but again there are some additional benefits wherein users do not again have to pay upfront cost. Users can provide staff with access to the latest software quickly and easily. Users pay for the software they use on a subscription model, typically on a monthly or an yearly basis regardless of how much they use the software and users can access the same application data from anywhere. However, there is a software limitation. There may be some limitations to a particular software application that might affect how users work. Any limitations should be taken into consideration when considering which PaaS platform is best suited for a particular workload. So in summary, IaaS, PaaS and SaaS each contain different levels of managed services. You may easily use a combination of these types of infrastructure you could use Office 365 on your company's computer, which is SaaS. And in Azure, you could host your VMs, which is IaaS. And then you can use Azure SQL database, which is PaaS, to store your data. With the cloud's flexibility, you can use any combination that provides you with the maximum result. If you just look at the management responsibilities, IaaS requires the most user management of all cloud services. The user is responsible for managing the operating system, data, and application. PaaS requires less user management. The cloud provider manages the operating system, and the user is responsible for the applications and data they run and store. SaaS requires the least amount of management. The cloud provider is responsible for managing everything and the end user just uses the software. So if you can just see this table and see the comparison between the different types of management responsibilities that you will have if you will work on any of these different types of cloud services. It is very important that users understand what they are responsible for when using cloud services to ensure their workloads are managed correctly and don't suffer any downtime. There is a shared responsibility model for ensuring cloud workloads run securely and in a well-managed way. Depending on the service you are using, the cloud provider is responsible for some aspects of the workload management and the end user is responsible for other aspects of workload management. So with this, we end with this particular topic as well. The next video will cover the summary of this entire module and some of the cloud concepts review questions.